what's up? It's Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be blasting Australians' legendary funeral doomers. Mournful Congregation, The June Frost, my personal favorite full length of theirs. Reissued by Parasitic Records in 2018. This is such a fucking banger. If you're a fan of Funeral Doom and you've never heard this, stop watching this video right now and go dive into this head fucking first. It's one of those releases that really is... Well. It fucking hits you where it needs to. It's heavy. It's fucking gorgeous at times. It's almost everything you can want from a Funeral Doom record. Sometimes I like a little bit more of a raw sound, but like this style fits Mournful Congregation's sound so well and this release is so important to me on a personal level. It's great to have it in my hands once more. It's been a very long time and Fuck yeah. I'm beyond stoked to have this. I mean, like... Mournful Congregation's one of those bands, like... You can't really go wrong. Look at their whole discography. It's fucking great. It really is, like... And the June Frost, I feel, is like that the apex of that, along with... The Incubus of Karma. I love that recording. It's so fucking good. Like, it just is. The way the songs are written, the way they flow, it's great. It really fucking is. And speaking of great, this is pretty much a re-review of Cannibal Corpse Butchered at Birth. 1991 Metal Blade Records. This is the UK version. Thank you to Dominic for sending this over. Two parental advisory warnings. One for the cover art and one for the lyrical content. It actually brought me back to when I bought my first Cannibal Corpse CD, which was The Bleeding in 1994. I went to the cash register Went to pay. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't sell you this. And I was like, why? And he's like, you're not 18. There's nowhere that it says you have to be 18. He said, store policy. So I got my mom. I said, hey, like, you know, I, I, this is what I'm going to buy. Like, But he won't sell it to me. Of course, she asks why, and I just said, like, because it has a parental advisory sticker. And a little bit before this, I got the downward spiral by Nine Inch Nails when it first came out. And my mom was not happy with the lyrical content. I was in fourth grade. I didn't need to be knowing about heroin addiction and sex and all that you know, stuff that goes along with the Downward Spiral, and the Downward Spiral, still to this day, is one of my favorite records that I don't own. Along, dude, you know me, three times now, I have held Pretty Hate Machine in my hand, but just was like, eh, I'll get it later. And I always regret it, that decision. I, I should have got it then and there, but... One thing about the UK was back in the 90s, I'm not sure how strict they are now, but they had the video nasties list. And obviously, look at how censored this is. Although, you still can look and be like, oh, there's a song called Meat Hook Sodomy. <laughs> like, you know? But I don't know if this came in like, uh, like a censored case as well. It probably did. I didn't ask Dominic, and I didn't look it up. But you get the parental advisory explicit artwork along with the explicit lyrics. But that logo, holy shit. Only the OG Cannibal Corpse logo is real. 
I definitely had someone tell me when I first got the reissue of Tomb of the Mutilated that it didn't count because it had the new logo on it. Like, it has the same music on it. How doesn't it count? Like, but it made me laugh. But then, like, the more I kept thinking about it, I love the original Corpse logo to death. And I'm definitely not alone in the death metal community. Like, what would you rather choose? For real. This, the new logo, or the old? In the comments, just write new or old. I, I, I legit want to know. Because I know there's some people out there that definitely like the new logo. And probably think that this looks like a childish mess. But it's not. To me, this emphasizes everything Cannibal Corpse stands for. Just in a logo. I can tell this is death metal just by looking at that. And that's the way shit should be. Like, look at that fucking cover. It's so goddamn good. And then, I don't know if they didn't add the lyrics on the original cassette, but they definitely did not add them on the UK release. But look at how badass the white corpse logo is on a black background. That looks amazing. But now imagine if it was the new logo. Like, uh, I mean, I guess it would look all right, but you know, it is what it is and there's nothing we can do about it. I guess word on the street is Chris Barnes owns this logo and will not let the band use it anymore. And I don't know how true that is these days, but I'm pretty sure Cannibal Corpse is pretty happy with their logo. I mean, it's a lot easier to read. It probably brings in a lot more fans. Especially, you know, some of the festivals that they would play and whatnot. Like, Cannibal Corpse is pretty much a mainstream death metal band. And that's awesome. They're almost like a real-life death clock. Like... Kind of, when it comes to death metal, I mean. Like, they're one of the few death metal bands that can legit, like, open up for Black Sabbath and, like, would have the crowd be on their side and not be chanting, like, Ozzy, Ozzy, you know? Like, sometimes, no matter what, like, if you're opening up for Slayer, I remember I was backstage with Mastodon the first time they toured with Slayer, they didn't get slayered off the stage, but that opening band fucking did. And it was pretty funny, too, because, like, the, the dudes that were playing, they were like, We know, we know. You want us to get off the stage, but we're here to play for you, so just chill. And they just got slayered pretty much completely off the stage. And it was pretty funny, honestly, but... You gotta feel bad for that band. They pr probably built that up since day one. Like, one day we're gonna open up for Slayer. And then they open up for them and it just falls to pieces. But Cannibal Corpse, on the other hand, could completely win over a Slayer fan base. And that's just the way it is. Because Cannibal Corpse fucking is one of those death metal bands that transcends the brutality into kind of normal human beings. Like, not just the underground. Not saying we're not normal, but you know what I mean. You're talking about, like, like fucking I've been reading Fangoria all morning. <laughs> like, old Fangoria as well, when a copy of Parasite costs... $54 on VHS but a fucking vinyl copy of Dawn of the Dead the Dawn of the Dead soundtrack on vinyl is $12.95 
which is fucking ridiculously cheap. Like, as soon as I saw that in here, I was like, holy shit. Yeah, records for everyone. Uh, and this was how you used to have to order music and stuff. Like, you would put, like, a check next to this, you'd get a money order, and, like, put it in this shit, and you would hope that, you know, you got your shit. But, like, this has a Dawn, Dawn of the Dead soundtrack, Phantasma, fucking sick stuff, like... Thank you, Dominic, again. Like, shit like this makes me so fucking stoked because it's like a look back into the past. But Cannibal Corpse Butchered at Birth is freight train sounding death metal at its finest. This shit is so fucking brutal. It's awesome step up from Eating Back to Life. It's definitely not as thrashy. It's just straight for the fucking jugular. And it's just all thanks to Robert Russe. Let's give him a round of applause. Seriously, Rob Russe, whatever golf course you're on right now, I hope you watch this video somehow. Because you're the fucking man. You're seriously the fucking man. Because that's the reason Cannibal Corpse used to sound like that whole freight train style of death metal, you can thank Rob Russe. And I, I love that shit. Like, that's why I love certain songs on Eating Back to Life, like Edible Autopsy. It just sounds like legit, like a fucking death metal freight train. But every song on Butchered at Birth sounds like that. And it's fucking sick. I also love the guest vocals by Glenn Benton from Deicide on Vomit of the Soul. He just... Glenn... Oh, man. He's one of my main vocal influences. Like, early Amon and early Deicide. Like, the first three Deicide records. I always used to try... And if you listen to A Cursed Womb, it's a mix of Winter and... Glenn Benton, early DSI. That's what I'm kind of going for when it comes to my vocal stylings. But when you hear some of the newer songs, you're going to hear some certain time ghoul elements, but also Beherit. And if you're like, wait, what? Yeah, just, just fucking wait. Because I heard the demo, like, the demo is all recorded. You guys are getting the promo in about a week. I think. Pat said a week. I forget, but every everything's ready to go pretty much. We're just waiting for uh, the actual drop date and whatnot. So if you pre-ordered it, it's not like the Rona mixes where I'm fucking in over my head. This is already all situated. We killed it on Bandcamp. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but holy shit. Thank you for the support. I asked Pat to send me the Bandcamp numbers earlier, and I was just like, R -r -r What? And all that is going towards artwork and a bunch of other stuff. And if you've been following me on social media, I drew up this little fucking irradiated goat larva design just for fun. And a buddy of mine on Instagram, he pretty much pumped it up with fucking steroids and made it into an actual design that we might make a t-shirt out of. Now, it is not going to be our final logo. It's just a logo I drew up fucking around. So, the t-shirt design is just that. It's a t-shirt design. It's not official, like, it's not going to be the end-all logo. But, like, you can't go wrong with that right there. It's so fucking cool. But, if you've never heard Butchered at Birth, come on. Meat Hook Sodomy, Gutted, Living Dissection, Under the Rotted Flesh, Covered with Sores, Vomit the Soul, Butchered at Birth, Rancid Amputation, one of the best Cannibal Corpse songs ever. And closing things off, Innards Decay. 
I love this fucking old Metal Blade logo. It's kind of hard to see, but it's fucking badass. I don't, yeah, there's a bigger version right there. It's not the, uh, Razor, but it, it's fucking cool. Because that was one thing I liked about the reissues. They, uh, added the axe and stuff, like... Well, this is Tomb of the Mutilated. I, I traded my Butchered at Birth for, uh... I forget if it was show tickets or a release. I forget off the top of my head. But, like, that's another reason I was so stoked that Dominic sent over Butchered at Birth. Because now I once again have every single Chris Barnes error Cannibal Corpse record. And... I love Chris Barnes, Eric Cannibal Corpse. Seriously. And I know Barnes is working on a new Six Feet Under record. And he's saying it's gonna be the best ever. So, you know, let's see what it sounds like. But the thing about Butchered at Birth is, like, th this is the Cannibal Corpse record that most fans go for when it comes time to blast some cannibal corpse like I know a lot of people that if you want to get into a good argument what's a better record Tomb of the Mutilated sorry wrong side or Butchered at Birth it's a great conversation starter slash argument because you can always be sneaky and say well, eating back to life is my favorite. But at the end of the day, if you held a gun to my head, Butchered at Birth. It's one of those death metal records like fucking Autopsy, Mental Funeral, Severed Survival. It's a fucking classic for a reason. This is so goddamn good, heavy, and just... Scott Burns killed it on here when it comes to the production. And this is 1991. So the whole Moore Sound studio scene was kind of beginning to get oversaturated with everyone and their mother coming to work there. Which led to bands like... Infester saying fuck that, we're gonna do this and go for a more organic sound. And according to Infester themselves, they felt at the time they went a little too organic, but to the depths and degradations, one of those death metal records that it stood the test of time. If it was to, if it came out today it probably would be sold out by tomorrow but cannibal corpse butchered at birth this is one of my favorite scott burns produced recordings like i i just i love the drum sound the guitars are chunky as fuck this is one of those releases that every band out there for the most part, tries to emulate in the death metal scene in some way, shape, or form. And I love it. And there's bands out there. For example, I could go with Infestment, but I feel like Skull Maggot does the Cannibal Corpse worship thing a little bit better than Infestment does. Like, Skull Maggot, fuck yeah. And Infestment, fuck yeah, too, but, like, Skull Maggot just has the corpse vibe down so well where it doesn't sound like a copycat it sounds like it's its own thing that's just heavily influenced by cannibal corpse where on infestment there's certain riffs where it's like no 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 like it is what it is but at the end of the day, Butchered at Birth by Cannibal Corpse is a true death metal classic. And I just wanted to talk about it again for 20 minutes because I fucking love it. And I think it's so cool to have a UK version of this. Like, with the. I actually like the fact that the artwork's censored here because 
I get an extra cover that I wouldn't have seen otherwise, and it's badass. But, like, again, comparing these logos, it's not too hard to pick out which one's fucking sicker. Obviously, this one. But, again, I want to know what you personally think. So, in the comments below, all you gotta do is write new... And I know Eating Back the Life is their debut album, but that's the new logo. New logo or old logo? But if you've never heard Butchered at Birth, what the fuck are you doing? Stop watching this video. Go listen to Butchered at Birth and listen to what we've been blasting. Mournful Congregation, The June Frost. Fuck yeah. And as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hails Dominic, and I have a little gift for you guys. I found this uh, download code by a band called Hungers. So press pause and snag that if you want it. It's all you, and thanks for watching again. Hoops. <laughs>